Fertility Process, presented by Sandra Perez, Program Project Specialist. Our agenda, reporting of fatality, carrier liability, dependency as defined by court decisions, acceptance or denial of claim, addressing notices, fatality benefits calculations, fatality subrogation third-party claim. Reporting of fatality. Time frame for reporting is within eight hours if reporting to ADOSH, within 24 hours or next business day if reporting it to the ICA Claims Division. Carrier liability. Benefit calculations are based on date of death, not date of injury. Fatality benefits. Injured worker benefits. Medical expenses related to the injury are paid and a maximum of $5,000 towards funeral expenses. Dependency benefits. Only dependent is the surviving spouse, no children, is paid at 66 and two-thirds of the average monthly wage until death or remarriage. Remarriage is paid 24 months of compensation in a lump sum. Fatality benefits. Burial expenses of a dependent during dependency is $800. Dependency as defined by court decisions. When is dependency defined? Dependency will be determined as of the date of death, not the date of initial injury. This is based upon a January 6, 1994 Arizona Supreme Court who issued an opinion regarding interpretation of ARS 23-1064-B. Claim for Dependent Benefits The form can be found on our website or it will be mailed to the personal representative once we receive the fatality report who can file spouse, spouse with dependents, dependent children, including stepchildren, if they were being fully supported by the deceased and the parents if they were being supported by the deceased. You may run into a case where the deceased had more than one child with a different ex-spouse or significant other. Each parent must file a separate claim for dependent benefits. Make sure you create an interested party for each parent separately as to not cause a problem such as giving out the address for the other parent. Each claim is to be notified separately to the carrier. Pursuant to ARS 23-1064-A, number 3, this may include stepchildren. Once a claim for dependent benefits has been filed, a notification will be sent to the insurance carrier. Information can be found under the blue fatality tab. The carrier will have 21 days to accept or deny the claim for dependent benefits. If a claim is being filed for just a dependent child or children, a form will be mailed to the family or personal representative to file for a guardian to be appointed for minor child or children. Acceptance or denial of fatality claim. Best practice when issuing notices is to address the notices to the personal representative of and then the name of the deceased as to not cause the family grief. Make sure that each notice is issued separately for each claim. If you are accepting the claim for dependent benefits, then mark box 4B and make sure you attach the Form 108 Wage Calculation Sheet and number 11 accepting the claim for benefits. If denying the claim, mark number 11 only, indicating that the claim is denied. The correct way to issue dependent notices. Notice of permanent disability or death benefits. If deceased had dependents from separate families, a notice has to be issued for each family. Do not issue one notice for all the families and make sure that they are addressed appropriately to each family. On line number one, you would indicate compensation is payable under ARS 23-1046. On line two, you would indicate fatal or fatality. 
best practice alert would be to indicate the name of the surviving spouse and their date of birth the name and date of birth of any dependent children fatality calculation sample the following sample is a sample of a spouse only with no children you would indicate the name of the surviving spouse the sum of sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage the first payment is effective as of the day after the death of the deceased to continue until the death or remarriage of surviving spouse and the payment in one lump sum of two years of sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage in the event and at the time of remarriage the following sample is a sample of a surviving spouse with one child the sum of thirty five per cent of the average monthly wage for their surviving spouse and the further sum of thirty one and two thirds of the average monthly wage for the child until the child reaches the age of eighteen years or until the age of twenty two years if the child is enrolled as a full time student in any accredited educational institution or over the age of eighteen years and is incapable of self support the first payment is effective as of the day after the death of the deceased if a guardian has been appointed then you would insert in the above paragraph the sum of thirty one and two thirds of the average monthly wage for a minor child payable to the name of the guardian of said minor and the first payment effective the date after the death in the event and at the time of remarriage of the surviving spouse they are due two years of the monthly entitlement of thirty five per cent of the average monthly wage if there is a dependent child sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage if the child is no longer receiving benefits payable in one lump sum in the event of remarriage or death of a surviving spouse the monthly entitlement for the dependent child will increase from thirty one and two thirds of the average monthly wage to sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage the following is a sample of a surviving spouse with two children the sum of thirty five per cent of the average monthly wage for the surviving spouse and the further sum of thirty one and two thirds of the average monthly wage on a share and share alike basis for the children until they each reach the age of eighteen years or until the age of twenty two years if the children are enrolled as a full-time student in an accredited educational institution or over the age of eighteen years if they are incapable of self-support if a guardian has been appointed then you would insert the following the further sum of thirty one and two thirds for the minor children payable to the name of the guardian of said minor children the first payment effective as of the date after death in the event and at the time of remarriage the surviving spouse is due two years of the monthly entitlement of thirty five per cent of the average monthly wage if there are dependent children sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage if the children are no longer receiving benefits payable in one lump sum in the event of remarriage or death of a surviving spouse the monthly entitlement for dependent children will increase from thirty one and two thirds of the average monthly wage to sixty six and two thirds of the average monthly wage there are further samples under the blue tab in the fatality section if issuing a 106 for more than two children or any other language important to remember visit fatality's blue tab for examples for many benefit scenarios subrogation third party the surviving dependents may pursue a cause of action against a third party pursuant to ARS 23-1023. Carrier may take a lien on the amount actually collectible from the third party equal to the benefits already awarded and paid. Thereafter, the carrier is liable to contribute the difference between the remaining amount collectible and benefits payable. Thank you. If there are any questions, please call at 602 542 four six six one